بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس آئی ہوپ یو آر فائن اینڈ سیف ایٹ یور پلیسز اینڈ وی آر اسٹارٹنگ دا کورس آف فرمنٹیشن بائی ٹیکنالوجی اینڈ ان فرمنٹیشن بائی ٹیکنالوجی دا مائکرو آرگنزمس دے آر ویری امپورٹنٹ بیسکلی فرمنٹیشن ریلائز آن مائکرو آرگنزمس سو ان دس ٹو ڈیز لیکچر ویل ڈسکس اباؤٹ وٹ آر دے ریلیشن شپ ہاؤ مائکرو آرگنزمس برنگ اباؤٹ فرمنٹیشن so uh, it's one of the quote by david uh, willis that fermentation may have been a better invention than fire because fire gives you energy and uh, no doubt energy but only energy uh, with the ash and water but fermentation gives you with the many uh, and many of the uh, useful products um, to be used in your daily life so keeping that view in uh, the with the importance of the fermentation this code goes good with this fermentation so again what is the definition of fermentation what is fermentation so fermentation uh, we all know that it's a natural process and the microorganism they consume the uh, organic substrate and they use that organic substrates uh, in their own metabolic processes which no doubt uh, multiplies uh, the microbes in their number uh, because they because the organic substrate uh, they provide the media growth media for the uh, microorganism uh, with the purpose that uh, microbes produce specific chemical products so the science of fermentation is also called as zymology so uh, and we all know that we all uh, very mm, clearly know this that uh, an electron transport chain or uh, aerobic respiration uh, cannot take place uh, due to any circumstances and in that case uh, the the body of whether the animal whether the microorganism whether the human they want energy so uh, the, the due to the absence of oxygen uh, with the Mm, uh, you can say non working of the electron transport chain uh, fermentation takes place and uh, the the purpose is to get energy uh, because there is no oxygen and there is no uh, nad or nadh available so uh, initially obviously this uh, the microorganism which are using this process they don't know that they are fermenting something but they simply Uh, try to extract energy uh, from uh, their source from their uh, food and in order to gain that energy they synthesize some useful chemical uh, you can say products which are beneficial for humans and other animals so talking about the history this is a brief history of fermentation that uh, from where it, it has started so the uh, it goes back to 4000 bc where the uh, fermentation process uh, it has it has been started uh, with the rice wine and that uh, that rice wine is very uh, you can say popular in chinese culture so it it uh, it was uh, in the literature that it was initiated by the daughter of the legendary king of wu uh, 4000 bc so the chinese culture uh, Uh, you can say pays tribute to the the daughter of that king as a goddess of rice wine so uh, but there there is no um, you can say the scientific background with this fermentation this is a process just um, to synthesize wine but they don't know they didn't know at that time that uh, there is n- properly microbiology and biochemistry is involved so the understanding of the scientific procedure of fermentation you know, microbiology began in 191850s when louis pasteur uh, succeed in producing two forms of amyl alcohol by fermentation so uh, after the louis pasteur identify bacteria and um, um mm, uh, parasites uh, sorry protozoa after that uh, uh, he kept on doing his research and in that research he ultimately able to uh, produce amyl alcohol by fermentation so between 90s uh, 1900 and 1930 ethyl alcohol and butyl alcohol they are the most important industrial fermentations in the world so 
they are you can say they are these are the top industries at that time uh, and fermentation is behind that uh, their production ethyl alcohol and vitriol alcohol but as the uh, industrialized revolution you know, bring the change and the chemical synthesis uh, uh, got its boom so the chemical synthesis of alcohol and the other solvents uh, they um, they are less expensive obviously so the interest in the fermentation it diminished uh, after the industrial Revo uh, revolution in the europe so it i i'm just going uh, brief with the types of fermentation because uh, i know that you are aware of fermentation and i am also uh, i will also discuss these types in detail in our coming lectures so i'm just giving a brief overview of the types of fermentation to give you the or you can say to re refresh your knowledge of biochemistry regarding fermentation so uh, the first type is lactic acid fermentation and how this lactic acid fermentation takes place lactic acid fermentation uh, started when the there is uh, uh, no uh, oxygen and the cell wants energy to carry out its function so the pyruvate which is the pro end product of uh, the glycolysis in the cytosol uh, which if the oxygen is present it will move toward this pathway and with the help of uh, coenzyme a it converts into acetyl coa pyruvate dehydrogenase uh, catalyzes this reaction and this acetyl coa will ultimately go into mitochondria when there is oxygen and uh, uh, obviously uh, nad uh, nad is produced in this uh, reaction so this acetyl coa carry the electron toward the oxygen in the mitochondrial respiration so this is the normal process but when the lactic when there is but when when there is no oxygen oxygen what will happen that the glucose in the process of glycolysis uh, oxidizes into pyruvate and that pyruvate is uh, uh there is no oxygen available for it so instead of moving toward acetyl coa synthesis there is lactate dehydrogenase enzyme which catalyzes the conversion of pyruvate into lactate and this uh, reaction or you can say this conversion is favor strongly favorable because there is a lot of free energy uh, release in this reaction and that energy is utilized by the cell to perform its function so uh, cell get benefited uh, it's a good process for the cell but the lactate which is accumulated at the result of the for its formation it's not good so in uh, in you can say in higher organisms or in the organism with having uh, advanced uh, you can say cell cellular processes like humans that lactate is uh, need to be removed from its place of synthesis so uh, there is a cori cycle aap uh, sabne iska naam sun rakha hoga cori cycle ka biochemistry aapne pad li hai ab tak kafi so cori cycle mein kya hai ki jo uh, uh, excess lactate produced hota hai uh, which is produced inside the muscle that lactate is moved toward the that that muscle cell is not able to degrade that lactate only the liver has the capacity to uh, reutilize that lactate so this lactate moves out of the muscles and obviously there when there is accumulation of lactate lactate is acidic so there is lactic acidosis uh, takes place and cramping uh, is a result so whenever uh, some uh, athletes they uh, they uh, you can say they over energize with the, their play and they try to hit um, a strong kick or uh, to uh, you can say defeat their opponents so they uh, use a lot of energy and in doing so they got the muscle cramps so the muscle cramps is due to the um, uh, formation of lactate and that lactate is uh, converting from the pyruvate so uh, the glucose which is uh, supplied by the uh, blood to the every to every cell that glucose has two options whether in the absence of uh, uh, you can say in relaxed condition that glucose is converted into uh, 
first it convert into glucose six phosphate and that it might have two fates that it can convert into glycogen or it moves toward the pyruvate pathway to provide energy so when there is no oxygen they put that pyruvate or you can say when there is need of quick energy that pyruvate is converted by the lactate dehydrogenase into the lactate and with the accumulation of lactate cramping result but that lactate ultimately moves out of this tissue and coming inside the blood and the blood carry that lactate toward the liver where the liver utilize this lactate convert uh, this lactate back into the pyruvate and that pyruvate it may move toward glucose 6 phosphate or glycogen synthesis so the cori cycle is the, is you can say the uh, transportation system in which uh, uh, the gluconeogenic uh, substrates are transported to the liver so at the same time that pyruvate is uh, uh, synthesized from the alanine as well so the transamination uh, uh, provide cells with the uh, pyruvate and at the same time the excess am amino ammonia uh, or amino group which is released in the um, cell it's carried uh, with the alanine uh, when the pyruvate uh, take up this amino group it becomes alanine and that alanine uh, comes in the circulation and moves toward the liver where it deaminate and ammonia is moved toward the urea cycle and that remaining uh, uh, you can say carbonic part moves toward the liver for further synthesis of pyruvate and the glucose so in this manner this cori cycle takes place i'm just uh, refreshing your memories of biochemistry next is alcoholic fermentation and there is another uh, pro product which is formed by the fermentation that is alcohol so glucose uh, after glycolysis convert into pyruvate provide atps that pyruvate Uh, that pyruvate uh, with the pyruvate decarboxylase the enzyme uh, by using the uh, thiamine pyrophosphate which is vitamin B1 and the magnesium uh, its cofactors uh, convert this pyruvate into acetyl uh, acetaldehyde and that acetaldehyde that oxygen that sorry that carbon dioxide at the from the pyruvate is removed in this process and that acetaldehyde is converted uh, by the alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme with the use of NAD, NADH, uh, and two hydrogen. It convert into ethanol. So this is an alcoholic fermentation in which glucose is forming alcohol uh, or ethanol. So if you uh, see all the uh, fermentation reaction, the hydrogen carbon ratio of the reactant and product remain the same. Means if the glucose, the hydrogen and carbon ratio for glucose is twelve to six, which is equal to two. And for the lactic acid, which is uh, three, uh, sorry, six or three, six over three, six uh, hydrogen and three carbon dioxide, sorry, three carbon. So the ratio uh, is again two, and for ethanol, it's again two. So in all ca chemical fermentation reactions, the ratio remains the same. so coming back to the microorganisms so microorganisms are the best choice for fermentation but why uh, because uh, uh, can anybody assume that uh, the the small little small microscopic creature which are unable to see with the naked eye uh, do they have the potential to uh, produce high volumes of the product and uh, they um, produce a, a diversity of fermentation products and that definitely are useful for human beings so the answer is yes because a simple microscopic microbial cell um, uh, it may not produce the significant volume of fermentation product but the billion but when the billions and billions of the microbial cell they are in a fermentation vent so the volume and the concentration of the fermented fermentation product in the industrial Uh, uh, is industrially and economically uh, significant. So, not a, a single cell, a uh, single microbial cell, it may uh, not give you significant volume. But when the billions of uh, microbial cell are present in an industrial setup, so they definitely provide you industrially and economically uh, significant quantities. So, what makes the microorganism best choice? first of all is high surface to area uh, sorry surface to surface area to volume ratio first is high surface area to volume ratio uh, you know we we know that uh, uh, the the microorganism is a small tiny creature uh, having a rod shape if you consider a rod uh, microorganism in your uh, 
imagination so there are six free surfaces uh, that surrounds the victarium so with these surfaces it inter inter uh, interacted with the surrounding environment and uh, obtain their nutrient or uh, throw away their uh, metabolic waste products so with uh, such a high number of free surface area Uh, which are available to a tiny volume of the cell it confers a high surface area to volume ratio i think is it it get clear to you that um, these cells are segregated they are not uh, if they even if they clump with each other they maintain their um, you can say the isolation or maintain their outer surface so they uh, interact with their outer surface the when they Mm, and the surfaces allows maximum uh, you can say diffusion or exchange uh, between the microbial cell and the environment so this um, and if you uh, consider uh, uh, a larger or uh, huge animal like elephant or human beings you can see that uh, they uh, need a lot of nutrients uh, and the uh, you can say the um, synthesis and the reproduction of these huge animal is slow so the micro, so these uh, the high surface to volume ratio of these microorganisms allows them to have a rapid synthesis and reproduction so uh, the microorganisms get double within hours and and the humans and the animals or huge animals they take many months to reproduce themselves okay so i hope uh, it is clear clear to you that high surface area to volume ratio next is microscopic and metabolic characteristic this is the second thing which uh, makes them best for this fermentation process so uh, the my, 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 my metabolic and microscopic characteristics in this uh, uh, characteristic part or in this metabolic diversity part basically uh, the microbes they are unique unique in a sense that they use they has the ability they they have the ability to use different energy sources and use different types of terminal electron acceptors you can you can see that uh, they the microbes they are methanogens they are self uh, sulfur using microorganisms they are mm, uh, thermal uh, those uh, microorganism that uh, occupies the thermal vents so they, uh, they they their metabolic characteristic are very diverse they can withstand with the high temperatures with the low temperatures and with the different uh, you can say the different energy sources they can utilize different energy sources so their metabolic diversity is very vast S sorry this is metabolic diversity Uh, next is mode of transport uh, nutrient transport mode of nutrition transport means uh, um, the nutrients diffuses into the microbial cells either by simple diffusion process in which uh, the difference of concentration gradient play their part so most uh, microbes diffuse um, uh, use the passive diffusion pathway um, for small nutrient molecules large and complex molecules uh, they for for the large and complex molecule they use active or group transport uh, transport which require uh, utilization of energy and the microorganism they reproduce uh, is actually uh, so there is no need to another partner so they don't need to get married and reproduce they just simply split their cells and produce two daughter cells which later grow into larger cell and repeat the cycle so the mode of nutrition uh, supporting their um, function then next is genetic adaptability genetic adaptability uh, microorganism they are very much uh, you can say adapt to their new environment they easily adapted uh, to different environmental condition and they are also uh, very flexible in uh, using the new sources of carbon or substrate so this ability is the result of various genetic adaptations or genetic changes which select successful strains through mutations and genetic recombination and uh, furthermore bacteria are even equipped with plasmids which can synthesize new enzymes and help microorganism exploit the new environment 
and the short uh, generation times and high population generation it helps uh, in the selection and recombination process so all these things uh, favors microorganisms to play their part in fermentation process next are the applications due to the uh, microbes and uh, there mm, you can say the there are different examples of the fermented foods in which different microbes are uh, responsible for the ultimate formation of the food like if the lactic if we talk about the lactic acid bacteria so, so the lactic acid bacteria which is found in milk they am um, um, which also found in milk uh, they are responsible uh, even on the surface of the cabbage they are responsible for the sauerkraut uh, you can say pickled cabbage formation mm, and the uh, lettuce kraut which is the same like sauerkraut in which this lettuce is get converted into this pickle type of uh, uh, you can say product then coffee beans their coffees and the coffee beans they are uh, very uh, you can say harsh in taste uh, the unripe so they get ripened with the fermentation due to the least lactic acid bacteria which found on their surfaces and they become this brown color uh, and the characteristic taste of these coffee beans is due to the lactic acid bacteria then vanilla beans uh, the vanilla flower is get fermented with the uh, due to lactic acid bacteria and in the same way the unripened cheese which is the cottage cheese uh, the lactic acid bacteria is responsible for its characteristic taste like cream cheese it's also again due to the lactic acid bacteria my sauce uh, ricotta all these things they are due to the these are all fermented foods and they are due to lactic acid bacteria hum mujhe lagta hai aapko bhook lagna shuru ho jayegi lectures padh sunte sunte uh next uh, lactic acid bacteria and other microorganism bacteria like uh, lactobacillus uh, sorry lactococcus lactis uh, which is the most predominant in lactic acid bacteria uh, and uh, they are responsible for the swiss cheese formation the propanoic acid bacteria and then uh, sourdough bread from yeast and cereal products like wheat so this bread formation is due to the yeast uh and then ginger beer ginger beer which is synthesized from yeast and ginger um, so yeast bring about the fermentation of the ginger ginger which is very um you can say Hum humans don't like ginger very much, uh, but uh, yeast they love ginger and they convert that ginger into um, they utilize that ginger and in response to uh, you can say the after metabolism metabolism of this ginger they produce the ginger beer. Next are the acidic acid bacteria. Uh, all these things they are very much uh, you people are aware of. All these things like apple from apple, the apple cider vinegar, and the acids and the response the bacteria which are responsible for this conversion is acidic acid bacteria. Then uh, uh, the honey bees collect the um, uh, we can say nectar from different plants uh, and they. Uh, then there are acidic acid bacteria there which convert that uh, nectar into honey. and honey is assumed as one of the most uh, you can say healthy um, food and uh, not uh, not only healthy but it has a cure of all the disease except death from this barley uh, barley uh, um, seeds the bar the malt and from this malt uh, there are different uh, malt syrups and whatever and from the grapes grapes from grapes become wine due to the and it's all because of acidic acid bacteria then are the yeast mm, yeast also are very important for the fermentation processes and uh, the beer stout ale uh, from malted grains uh malted beverages they are produced by brewing so yeast are involved in the process yeast convert fermentable sugar to ethanol and carbon dioxide uh, they do not uh, yeast do not produce enough amylase to hydrolyze starch in barley grains so they are germinated pure prior to brewing 
so then uh, uh, they are added for bitterness uh, um, which have the inhibitory effect of gram positive bacteria saccharomyces uh, carlsbergensis is the principal organism used in this beer and ale production so the species subjected to various genetic modification to increase the efficiency of the fermentation and in addition to ethanol and carbon dioxide yeast produce small amount of glycerol acetic acid um, aromatic esters uh, and ale is the top fermented beverage from saccharomyces cerevisiae so the wine from vermouth from fruits jitne bhi fruits hain sabse jo wine aur ye jo nectared wine banti hain usme yeast use hota hai uske alawa rum from molasses the molasses the sugar cane sihat thick syrup from that syrup rum is created uh, generated and but uh, yeast is used and at the same time the coffee beans citron from yeast and acetic acid bacteria so the coffee beans uh, they are fermented uh, with a combination of citric acid uh, sorry yeast and acetic acid bacteria next are the fungi and mold uh fungi and mold they uh, like candida is uh, in kefir kefir is uh, south east asian uh, food not you uh, much famous in pakistan but in uh, indonesia in uh, india in malaysia or in the far areas of south east south asia they are this is one of the common food jaise ki hamare gharon mein achar ek common cheez hai wahan par kefir jo hai jo ki fungus se banti hai wo bahut jo hai common hai so uh, fungi may be the food or make the food edible following processes processing make may makes it possible to consume the food stuff by adding modifying or removing components including flavor nutrition elements vitamins or colors to enhance the appeal or appeal of the food so fungi are the common contributor for the processing of food they use that dates back to the start of the civilization when bread and wines were the first to made deliberately so these days the selection and use of fungi is highly organized field of research uh, and development in the industry so these days means the 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 previous uh, time um, when this wine industry booms so they use different type of they select different fungi and mold for their um, flavor characteristic flavors penicillium is the uh, mold have both positive and negative effect on the food industry the same way that yeast do some mold are perfectly safe to eat and some cases some even desirable the classic would be the cheese made with mold such as blue uh, brie camembert tea and uh, gorgonzola these are different cheese name of cheese or you can say different types of cheese which use molds soya sauce from soya bean by koji pours ye soya sauce ke senses mein jo fungi use hoti hai jo mold use hote hain aur soya sauce to hamare yahan bhi bahut common food hai so uh, then how it then it comes toward the controlling so there must be some controlling factors in industrial fermentation uh, and which keeps which must be monitored at all at all levels so first of all first factor is acid levels uh, if you are using some uh, microbes which are acidic in nature or um, when you are creating wine or just like soya sauce type things then you need to monitor the acid level if there are too much uh, microorganism in the in the in the sample or in the, uh, the fermentation vent then uh, obviously acid level uh, it goes higher then amount of alcohol what type of alcohol and what percentage of alcohol must be there in wine or in all the different uh, uh, rum or ale in all these things beer then use of starters starters are the microorganism which uh, need to start the culture you can say the young active uh, microorganism they are they makes the starter so starter must be healthy must be fresh must be um, lively and they um, they don't means if you use the old uh, strains old strains means the, those strains which are grown for many days or for many times so the the starters needs to be refresh 
before uh, starting any industrial fermentation process then temperature is very important oxygen level and salt so these are the uh, factors which are very important in uh, maintaining the industrial fermentation next microorganisms that as direct food single cell proteins they designate uh, as high protein food compared to yeast and other microorganisms these single cell proteins they are synthesized uh, in, in at industrial scale and these single cell protein are supply, uh, supplied to those individuals which are deficient which have deficient resources to take uh, uh, proteins so as an alternate single cell proteins are um, given to them then saccharomyces cerevisiae which is the most common type of yeast uh, they has leavening property source of nutrients hydrolyzed plant tissue cheese whey and ethanol even ki aapke ghar mein jo ek simple aata uh, hota hai usme bhi jo hai yeast hota hai ye aksar jab temperature na control rahe garmi zyada ho to aata ka kehte hain ki aate ka khameera ho gaya ye khameera wo khameera kya hota hai wo ferment ho jata hai ho jata hai to usme andar jo hai na wo uh, leavening property aa jati hai wo it get up jab aap usko pakate hain to so or normally hum khud se bhi yeast use karte hain ferment karne ke liye jab aap pizza bread wagaira bana rahe hain to ye khud se bhi as use hoti hai direct then yeast cell deliver proteins and nucleic acids yeast probiotics mein ka object role aa raha hai so kefir they, these products and their uses they, they, if we talk about the kefir it improves immune responses uh, indonesian temp which is soya bean se banta hai reduce cholesterol then in nepal this uh, grudruk oh, sorry gandruk which prevents cancer contain lactic acid vitamin c carotenes and fibers uh, then natto soya beans uh, which reduce brain hemorrhage vitamin k टू डिफिशंसी uh, को ये फिलो फिल करता है उसकी प्रोसेस को प्रिवेंट करता है देन किम ची विच इज अ कोरियन बेस्ड यू कैन से पिकल इट एलिविएट और इट इट हेल्प इन सोदिंग कॉन्स्टिपेशन कॉलन कैंसर एंटी स्ट्रेस लोअर कोलेस्ट्रॉल ओबिसिटी एंड लिवर डिजीज सो दे ऑल हैव गुड बेनिफिट्स देन patty janar fermented rice uh, which is common in himalaya area so they increase the strength of women after child birth do so different area use different type of fermented food then kumis which is a dairy product uh, it help in removing the pulmonary tuberculosis mm, issues then becomes the probiotics and its effect um biofidus bacteria species the um, incidence of neonatal necrotizing enterocolitis so this uh, probiotics they are very important for uh, health of the body they reduce uh, these necrotizing enterocolitis then enterococcus uh, face face fasciculum facium they reduce the duration of acute diarrhea these microorganisms then lactobacillus strains they uh, obviously they help in lactose digestion so diarrhea in lactose intolerant uh, these uh, lactobacillus strains they increase uh, mucosal immune function mucin secretion so these strains are helpful in digesting lactose which is found in the milk then are the bacteroid species uh, they are helpful uh, in reducing the chronic colitis gastritis and arthritis saccharomyces boulardii recurrence of clostridium difficile diarrhea antibiotic associated uh, diarrhea or functional diarrhea in irritable bowel syndrome ibs so these different species they um, cure different diseases lactobacillus plantarum which reduces the di- diarrheal inflammation pain constipation and inflammatory bowel disease bloating flatulence lactobacillus rotary uh, they reduce uh, reduce the duration of acute uh, gastroenteritis 
then lactobacillus uh, rhamnosus uh, which increase the cellular immunity lactobacillus uh, salvi salvarius it reduces suppress and eradicate heli helicobacter pylori in tissue culture and animal models by lactic acid secretion so this is basically this uh, today's lecture is basically refreshing your knowledge of uh, previous knowledge of microbiology which you have learned in your previous semesters so then then comes the genetic engineering uh, the, with the genetic engineering technique or approach um, animal plant and microorganism they uh, are breed to have improved characteristics which gives you yield disease resistance appearance processing attributes and fermentation characteristic so the conventional breeding and mutation uh, gives you the selection of desirable trait and then non predictable nor successful time consuming um, the previous conventional method of breeding and uh, selection is time consuming and uh, maybe you after spending so much time you may not find the your you can say your interest uh, or whatever you want to do with this uh, trait it may not be produced so genetic engineering which is using recombinant dna technology cell hybridization or uh, protoplast fusion methods all these methods in which cell of one organism uh, insert into the cell of other organism then the species specific functions uh, they, they programmed for specific function then they moved for the application yeah, ultimately animal plants and microorganism they give you this effect so genes from human cells uh, beta cells uh, beta cells the pen the pancreas is to make insulins mm, they transfer into bacteria uh, obviously their genes transfer to bacteria and they the bacteria are then unable to uh, that become able to make insulin and then insulin can corrected and purified and that insulin is then injected to the patients to treat diabetes so this is one this is one of the first in uh, you can say invention or development which leads toward the biotechnology um, uh, industry or which basically uh, give a uh, Uh, bring this techno uh, field in the limelight this this uh, invention uh, brings the biotechnology field into limelight so this is the first product uh, which is synthesized by the cohen and boyer and the first biotechnology firm was gene tech which is established by these two scientists by using this method so i am concluding today's lecture so unfortunately the fermented food are not uh, in common due to the modern lifestyle and growing popular growing popularity of fast food it's a shame so fermented food it's not just tasty but extremely healthy nutritious and important for the well being of our of our body but unfortunately we are not consuming fermented food we are more uh, tend to word Uh, eating fast food and gaining weight and having hormonal issues and having acne and having uh, uh, low blood pressure or high blood pressure and all these things and so so we are more uh, uh, inclined toward all these things which is not good these are the references uh, and thank you so much and eat such healthy food Thank you students if you have any question please ask Allah Hafiz